What's that? Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think you can hear me, right? Who's this? Salia? Okay. Um, so I shared one document which is basically a small uh, user guide which lets you, you know, set up your Jira account. So was anybody able to do that? Uh, Chetan, I did it, but I just don't know how to log back into that uh, tool. Um, you don't know how to log back. So didn't you set up with an ID and password? Yeah, I did. Uh, what uh, URL am I going to? Oh, you didn't save the URL? It will. I it would have, that is. No, it would have generated a URL for you when you did. Yeah, your, it did. Uh, but I, I turned off that. I um, X'd out that screen, and now I'm lost. Mm -hmm, okay. But you got the email, right? You got the email, like verified your email ID. In that, you have yeah. the URL. Yeah, you will have that. It says your Atlassian Cloud site is ready. Mm -hmm. But uh, oh, that's all right. Okay, I got it. Yeah, there will be a link there. Okay. Okay, so okay, we'll go to the tool now. So, uh, are you sharing? Are you sharing something? Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So basically, that's my landing page. Assuming you know you have set up your account, you have your um, you know environment ready. So you will basically log in using your ID and password, and you will see this kind of interface when you get into Jira. Now, Jira is one of the tools you can use to manage your sprints. Okay, there are tons of tools. One of the most important or one of the most popular tools, or there are many popular tools, but Jira, and uh, there's one more, uh, Rally. That's another tool which is very popular in today's uh, environment. So, Rale? Rale, yeah, Rale. I've never used Rale, but that's similar to Jira. So, if you know Jira or if you have done work in Rale, it's kind of similar. There's not much of difference, except the, of course, they are different tools, different interface, but the concepts are same. So, don't worry about, you know, learning all the tools. Just try to use Jira. That should be enough. Okay, so first thing, why do we need Jira? I just now answered this, but still I want to hear from you guys. Why do I need this tool? As we are working in the sprint agile environment, then we need the product, back. we want to see product backlog, we have to see the status, mm -hmm. which, uh, which sprint we have completed, which sprint we are, uh, uh, we, and this, we can also see the priorities as well and we can update the sprint as well after completion of the one sprint we can update over there and there are lots of advantages mm -hmm. right see the just to give some uh, brief history on jira tool initially jira was uh, when jira was created this was created to just track the issues this tool was not heavily used in agile environment uh, until recent, um, like I think 2010 onwards, or not even 10, I think 12, 13 onwards. Before this, or before uh, this time, you know, Jira was only used to track the work in any environment. And have you heard of uh, Kanban? Yes. Okay, so basically to, to track your work on the Kanban lines or basis on the basis of Kanban principles, they created this Jira tool. Now let me tell you what exactly Kanban is. So in Kanban is basically was introduced way back in, I don't even like, I think late 1950s or something by a Japanese scientist or not even scientist, this guy was an industrial engineer he introduced Kanban to make basically life easy for the people who are working on the shop floor environment. 
when I say shop floor, it's basically you know in the like um, industries where people work um, on the assembly lines and they are producing goods and it's moving from one assembly line to another assembly line or one part to another part. That's basically shop floor environment. Typically, you will see you know heavy machinery or cars or automobiles uh, equipments. They are being built on those kind of assembly lines. So in order to manage their work, the shop floor uh, for the shop floor people, the Kanban boards were created. So a Kanban board is nothing but in those days, they, they used to put a physical board in that workspace and they used to track how much work is awaiting, how much work is in the progress or which is being worked upon and how much is done so there were basically three different um, lanes where they was to track the work how much work is waiting how much is in progress and how much is done so that's what Kanban board and it used to help them to see you know uh, where they are and also to smooth the the workflow so they don't want to pile up the work and then all of a sudden they realize, okay, we have like so many items to be built and then, you know, it will always create a backlog and a lot of issues will come in. Basically, the bottom line is to make your process more efficient, effective and there are many more principles along with this like just in time where, you know, you don't want to build your inventory and then add cost to it. So those, you know, we won't go in that detail, but that's basically the concept of a Kanban board. So <clears throat> anyone else, um, uh, Darshan, you want to add something what I said? No, that's true. It's just in time. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. When you go to the McDonald's, they are doing the just in time process. Mm -hmm. Everything is ready back uh, uh, in, in their uh, back uh, back environment means in the warehouse and they are just manufacturing and give it to us in on time means mm -hmm. you have to wait for five five or ten minutes that's it that's a just in time right yeah so basically yeah, Japanese people invented that yeah so this Kanban boards would help them to even manage the inventory like for example they would say okay you know we have um, uh, these many things to be done so we need these many inventory and that's basically they would order it from somewhere and start working on it instead of keeping a huge set of inventory and then figuring out how much we need. So on the same lines, now the IT also adopted this Kanban system because they realized the benefits of it. Of course, in the IT, we don't have any physical stuff to be moved from one place to another place, but there are certain things which still needs to be moved. And we'll take a look at what exactly I mean by that. Right, so Jira is Jira used to be basically mainly used to for uh, managing their Kanban boards. In G in Agile terms, we call it Agile boards, but they are similar to Kanban boards. So, uh, Jaitan, how do you spell this? C A N B A N. No, it's Kanban. It's K A N B A N. Okay. Alright, okay, thanks. Okay, so now assuming that you know we have the theory in place, right? We understood what exactly Scrum is, who is a product owner, what is the role of a BA, we have a sprint team, then we have a sprint planning sessions and all that, right? No one's so now the first thing I need to do is I need to set up the Jira tool that we already did this right I went there and created my account and um, using my ID and password I did everything and the Jira tool provided a unique link for my website and that's what I'm using right now second thing is you go and create a project Right. So, for example, I have one project here, but let's take, you know, I will create one more project for you guys. Once you click 
create project select this one because that's what we are trying to do you know scrum software development if you pick any of these you know it will have a different template different uh, fields which may not be exactly for scrum so please select this one Ethan? yes um, I do, do not I, I don't have these options it has straight away taken me to uh, to a page which says uh, create give your project name and mm -hmm. then it has taken me straight to the trial board which is the backlog so okay. I didn't get that option to choose my uh, software from so did you select exactly what I told you in this um... yeah the second one yes yes absolutely no no wait one second in this guide how to set up Jira if you don't pick this option mm -hmm. then it won't give you this so make sure you know because by default I think it is this one which is selected and if you didn't change it to this one which is a Jira software and documentation you won't get all the options which I'm going through um, okay. Can you? Okay. Can I share my screen for a second? If uh, mm -hmm. I got what you're saying, like I I am now getting exactly what you're showing, mm -hmm. because there are in the in the title uh, bar, it is it says dashboards project. Okay. No, I'm giving it to you. So let's see what what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. So go to this the. This is where I am. Go to project. Create. Create. Okay. 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 Yeah. All right. Okay. You got it. This is a scrum software. Okay. Actually, it I I was in the create button already. Mm -hmm. So over here, it will then give me the next option. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank so you. I'll take the. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Okay, so I'm going back here. Projects, create project. Click on so uh, Scrum software development, and this is by default, you know. Now here, one important thing is in Jira. Issue is basically a very generic term. Anything, it's a bug or a task, subtask, story, epic. Everything is called an issue. So issue is like a very generic term within issue you need to understand what is the type of issue you are trying to do generally we'll stick with these three epic story and subtask okay so I won't change I mean there's nothing here you can do so you'll just pick select and let's give a name to the project let's suppose we'll say online Okay, I'm hearing a lot of uh, background noise. Okay, Meena, that's from your side. So can I just mute you? You can unmute yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just okay. Yeah, there's no noise here. I'm just by myself. So. Uh, yeah, but I think it's from your end. So I will just mute your, you and you can unmute sure. yourself anytime. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just giving you this name, online library system. And uh, don't try to change this key. It's basically, you know, the system is creating um, just a unique key. I don't know why they do it, but we won't touch it so that's the name of the project we are giving okay and then submit okay 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 so I'll just change it to OLS so it has to be unique Okay, so there you have your project ready now. 
projects, right? So that's a second step you do, create your project. Now you see here, everything is blank here. I don't have anything here as of now. So what is the next step you will do? Who can tell me? So the first thing I... Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, product, product backlog. Okay. We, so you, we create a product, product backlog. Yeah, it's already this, you are in the backlog. By default, you get into the product backlog. Now within the product backlog, what do you do? Um, user stories. Mm -hmm. Right. But we'll start with epics and then we'll go to user stories. User stories. Okay. okay. So let, let me open an Excel here. So let's see, you know, in order to online. So now I'm saying that, okay, I want to basically check out books. Check out books, right? As part of the online banking library system, Checkout books is one of the main feature. Okay. So do you think this is an epic? Yes. So let's yeah. see, right? That's an epic because you know it involves a lot of different subtasks or sub-activities. So but you know, just by looking at it, I can see it's an epic. So now we know that it's an epic. So let's do this, go back to our tool, right? I'm in my backlog. You click, come here, create. I won't change my project name here because I have multiple projects. I will just keep it this one, online library system. In the issue type, select an epic, right? Because first thing you need to do is epic, then you come to the user stories. That's how you should do. So first I know that, that we have an epic here, which will be part of my online library system. And the epic name is basically checkout books. Now here, I would not care much about this. I can just copy and paste the same thing. Now, this is where you need to write your user story along with your acceptance criteria. Okay. Okay, so over so, here only we need to market at the front and the back of the card. Yeah, because here you are doing it electronically, so there is no like front and back, but what yeah. you will do is as a okay. uh, library member, I want to check. Something of that sort, right? I mean, you can always change it. But one important thing about Epic is you don't want to write Epic, uh, I mean, you don't want to write an acceptance criteria for an Epic because the reason being the Epic is anyways to be broken down into stories. So don't try to, you know, write um, acceptance criteria for an Epic. Just keep it very simple Epic because anyway, you are trying, you will be breaking down the Epic into small stories. Okay. Chetan, I have a question here. Yeah. So, uh, in the use cases, uh, I remember that uh, um, we had the uh, precondition listed as he has to be a library member. Mm -hmm. Something of that sort. Yeah. Uh, in, in user stories, we just take it for granted that he's uh, the, uh, it's already a library member? No, you can specify that in your acceptance criteria. Okay. So you can say that, you know, um, there is another format which we can discuss in the next session. There is what we call given when then. 
that's another format which you can use to create or to write your acceptance criteria right but let's let's first understand the basic and then we'll go to this one but to answer your question yes you can define your preconditions as part of your acceptance criteria okay cool thanks sure so I'm just writing it here you know I, I'm not going into detail because I know that it's going to be you know we need to break it down into small stories so I'm just keeping it here priority you can set this priority high medium highest lowest right I'm just going through what most important uh, things are if you want to attach some documents you can attach it from here right you can attach your documents if you want to any supporting document if you think they are important you can assign yourself assign it to me you get assigned to this uh, story now because it's an epic you cannot map an epic to another epic that's why it says an epic cannot have another epic link to it okay and then you will create so now you can see your epic is ready right you have an epic in your backlog but now the goal is to create small user stories for that epic so now I'll go and say okay what are the stories which we think you know will come out of this in order to check out books what do you need needs a catalog online okay uh, display catalog right Acheta, uh, where we can see the product backlog when can we see what do you mean no no where 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 oh that's where your booth? this is your backlog you see yeah, but uh, but where it is because I just created a uh, oh, project okay. according to you did go to boards okay pick your um, uh, project and here you will have this on the left side of the panel you will have this icon that's your backlog no, in the boards, there is on board, the okay. BP board. Let me give you the control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see on the left side, you have this, go on the left side, yeah, that one, that's your backlog, click that. There's nothing is here. Yeah, because you don't have anything, you need to create it. I already created what the on online library system I just did it I like mean simultaneously I was working on this thing yeah but you created a, yes I created what did you create uh, an the epic same thing means check, check out yeah epic okay check click click on the that epic link you no know, on the right side there is one more you no know, just next to it yeah go go back go back to that yes there is version and then there is epic next to that panel yeah just a little bit right little bit right. yeah there is an epic there oh this one yeah oh, okay 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 got it got it got it check on check check out books okay yeah okay thank you sure okay so the next thing you need to do is create the user stories for that epic so let's take this example here so display catalog okay first thing I need to do is create my account right create account um, display catalog and there can be many more so we won't go and try to do the entire project here we will just pick one here first right create account and display catalog these two so what I will do is I will go again create pick your same project I mean same project should be there now instead of epic you will pick story uh, 
create user account right and then he, here you will write okay in this part you will write your ex, your user story and also an acceptance criteria everything in here you will say this is very important highest again if you have any documents you can upload it from here i will assign it to myself now this is very important make sure you pay attention here so epic link you need to link it to the epic right that's what we call the traceability so you need to make sure you pick the right epic because that will be a link or a chain which will track how many stories are for that epic so with this is our epic right that's what we created correct so i'm linking it back yeah. to my epic checkout books create now you can see your backlog got added with one story checkout books is your epic and create user account is your a user story same thing you can do with another one display catalog I will say this is uh, high. Now the re this is very important because what will happen is based on the product owner telling you which ones are very important, which are one are less important, you will basically uh, assign that ranking here. So if you have ten stories in your backlog, out of ten, if like four are highest, so those four will always be on the top. the ones which are medium or low or lowest will basically be somewhere down so you know that the top ones are the most important ones and you have to pick them because they are they have been assigned that ranking by the you know product owner so i'm putting this here and again i'll do the same thing i will select the same epic here and create So now I have two stories for one epic, right? That's my epic, and that's my story two and three. Clear? That's your step three. You will add stories to the backlog, and you will keep doing it as many as you uh, extract or identify along with, you know, as you discuss with your product owner. You will keep doing it. there is no you know uh, phase or there is no uh, set time that you will come start and complete this is a continuous process that's what we call the product backlog grooming you are grooming the product backlog continuously you know the grooming right we all groom we all try to look nice and that's what exactly it means this concept has been borrowed from our day to day life you need to keep grooming your product backlog that means you need to keep updating it keep enriching it keep adding some more information to your backlog as and when you get some more information clear yes yeah. okay so now we have the stories assuming that you know we have 10 more stories now the thing is you need to estimate them right so what will happen is the team will basically meet i'll just click this here Okay, I need to do one thing.
So there is, um, you know, there, this is what we call configuration. Uh, by default, you don't have all the fields in your um, view, so you need to configure them. Okay, and I'll tell you how to do it, but let me first set it up. Okay, so now we should be able to see that. Yeah, now I have it. Okay, so now the next thing is you need to do estimation. Because Are you talking of time estimation? Yeah, how not exactly time, how complex this story is. You don't do it in hours. Generally we do it in story points. You can do it in t shirt sizing, you can do it in different ways. But most popular method is story points, okay. right? And story point is nothing but a relative uh, measurement or relative value against a baseline. That means you pick one story and say, okay, this is what a story looks like. I mean, this story will take. Okay, let me back up. There's a range of values you can pick for story points. Have you heard of this uh, Fibonacci numbers? Yeah, I, I heard, but I'm not able to wiggle it. It's like a series of numbers, right? Yes. It is. Uh, with some, some uh, similar value between um, each number succeeding the preceding number. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, This there is a series of it's it's basically it's not a you know sequential numbers yeah and um, basically it goes like one three eight like eight yeah something of that sort so let me show you that one second I think I have it somewhere so let me just open this. Yeah, see, it's it starts with like uh, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 24, 34, and it keeps going. But generally, we don't need to worry about the entire set of numbers. We generally play with uh, among these. Uh, uh, one, two, yeah? Yeah, it, it is like I just remembered the numbers are, placed, are in such an, uh, such a, uh, an order, mm -hmm. which is like if you, if you see 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, that's how they are generated. Mm -hmm. So they have a relation with the preceding number, that's how the succeeding number is arrived at. Right. Yeah, so it could be any any uh, gap or series in between them. Correct. But generally the story points when we are doing it, we, do, we use the Fibonacci sequence numbers and generally okay. we use from 1 to 13. Anything beyond that is basically an epic. We don't worry about this. So 1 through 13 is what we should be, you know, playing with. So what it means is whenever you are assigning the story points, that means you will pick from 1 through 13. Of course, you can go 21, 34 also, but that means you are dealing with a huge big story, which is an epic in itself, which cannot be estimated. You need to break it down into small components, into small stories, so that you can you can estimate them in a much better way, right? Using the Fibonacci sequence. Okay. So, and story point is nothing but the level of complexity you are dealing with that particular story. So, I'm saying my create user account. That's a story, and assuming you know the entire team will be reading this story along with the acceptance criteria, they will see how much. What is the story point we can give it to? What is the story point I need to give? Right, so I will say three. So basically my, the team estimate is three. One important thing is, let's suppose we have five people on the team. Right, generally the sprint team is 
five to seven people, not more than that, not less than that. Chetan, sorry. Uh, what is story point? So story point is estimation. It's, it's, yeah, you use it for estimating a story. It it is basically we we assign a numeric value to a story, which tells you how complex it is. Okay. Right. But this is not. Don't please please don't confuse it with hours. You are not assigning the hours here. You are just saying that you know this is my story point. It has nothing to do with hours. I'm not saying it. It will take me three hours to do it. It, I'm, ta I'm saying that it is. It will take me three story points to do this. So, did you get that? Yes, got it. Thank you. So. I'm, I did my story point for three. Now, one thing I was saying is, let's suppose we have five people or all of us, right, in whosoever is on the call right now. Let's assume that we are the sprint team. Okay. All, um, all five of us are uh, the part of the sprint team. So everybody will tell what they think about this story, how much story points they want to assign. Somebody can say three, somebody will say is eight, 13. Now let's suppose out of five people, four go with three and one says, okay, no, it is eight points. So what the, uh, the protocol is, we need to talk to that person who has told eight and ask them why it is eight. Do they have some reason why they think it is very complex? If they say yes, because I'm new to it, that's not a valid reason because, you know, you, the reason is, I mean, they, this person is new. That doesn't mean that, you know, it is that complex. If they have a logic saying, you know, the reason why I'm saying it because it needs a lot of database tables to be updated. It has got a lot of screens to be developed. Then this guy has a valid point and everybody has to go back and rethink what they think about this, this story. Meena, are you okay? Yeah, I had a question about the story point. Mm -hmm. So it seems like it's a it's a very relative number. What is a three to me it might be a five to somebody else. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. So yes. is there is there any sort of guideline for um, mm -hmm. assigning a number like this? And besides, what what is the what are the caps, lower and upper caps for numbers like this? Right. See, generally each team will come up with their own um, you know guidelines. So somebody will say, okay, you know, three story points is basically something which will take us two days of work, right? Some people also like to see in hours because it's very easy for us to understand that. So in some teams, they will say, okay, you know, three story point is equivalent to uh, 24 hours of work. So it all depends on, you know, how team wants to set their, you know, guidelines. So, for example, if I say that, you know, this story, approximately, if we talk to the team, in their mind, they will do a math, right? They will say, okay, to create a count, you know, it will approximately take me one week, 40 hours. Correct? Display catalog, maybe it is, it will take me, again, 40 hours. So, we will see that, you know, this one story, 40 hours, maybe that's approximately eight points. And that is your reference point. So any other story when you pick, you can compare it against this story and say, okay, if this took, this is eight points, and the new story which we are analyzing, if it's more complex, then you may assign 13 points. Or if it's less complex, you may assign three points, depending on how you think. There is no hard numbers here. There is no math. There is no formula here. It all depends on, you know, how you guesstimate it. 
But are there any caps for like what what can be the lowest points? What what can be yeah. the highest point? Yeah, there is the cap is one. As you see here, one is your minimum you should do, right? Maximum you can go any. There is no limit to it. But generally, because you are writing at a story level, you should not exceed beyond 13 points. Okay. When because if you are saying 21 points, that's an epic. You don't need to estimate it because epics cannot be estimated. They are very difficult to be estimated. So minimum okay. is one. Maximum you can do is 13. Okay. Okay, so are we good up to here? Okay, I, I need to do, do this. You know, I need to estimate this point for this one. So let's do this. You know, um, display catalog. So let's vote on it. So everybody will say, you know, how much do they think the story point is? How much story point this? story is worth Thirteen. okay what about remaining guys so we have 113 then darshan you Sorry. Okay, I'm saying that we are trying to estimate the display catalog story. So what do you okay. think, you know, your estimate is? How many story points you want to assign? Eight. Okay. So what about Deepti? Chetan, actually, I'm... Um, traveling and uh, like I'm just listening to what you're saying I'm not working on it Chetan. Oh, okay 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 never mind what about you Hari yeah let me choose 11 okay and Meena I'm thinking 8 uh, Chetan I'm not able to uh, see the steps that will go under this I can only think of two things yeah okay the, mm -hmm. that would be the number of uh, items in the catalog and the titles. Mm -hmm. That is what we need to display, right? Okay. Yeah. So basically, two subtasks under this. So I don't know. I am just estimating like a mm -hmm. six or an eight. Okay. So, see the way mm -hmm. generally it works is the developers will be doing these estimates, right? BAs are not doing estimates. First thing first, because BAs' role is to work on the backlog. The developers work or the developers job is to read these stories and do an estimates because they are the people who will be developing it writing the code so they will in the basically the way it works is in their own mind they will do some rough calculation okay you know looking at the story I need to do 10 subtasks so they will say okay in, in order to do this it may take um, me maybe approximately 40 hours so I will assign 13 points because the baseline or the benchmark of our project is any story which is worth uh, let's suppose three days of work that is 24 hours of work is let's suppose uh, we give it five points or eight points so if it 40 po 40 hours that means it has to be 13 points correct so they will do that kind of mental math in within their heads and they will say okay you know for this example I think I got two eights 113 and 111 you know we will basically come to a consensus that why people think it's 13 why it's 11 and assuming that you know the entire team comes to a consensus we will pick a right number always go with little high than less so here to safeguard the team I will say okay let's pick 11 Oh, I don't have 11 sorry 13 so I'll pick 13 here so if you have even two 13s 
and three uh, three eights don't go with eights always go with 13 because you need to keep the buffer you don't want to underestimate and then realize that you know you cannot handle it so always keep 13 points right so now I have both the stories which is 1 3 and 1 13 okay clear Chetan, up to this point yeah Chetan, it's like um, this uh, you said yesterday that or maybe in the beginning of the session uh, right now that they, they discuss it among themselves like yes. if a person is not uh, um, saying what the others are saying then he can justify as to why he's chosen a value which is not uh, equivalent to the others correct so here yeah so then the others automatically agree uh, or maybe uh, then there is there, there is a consensus. They reach a consensus, and and so is it like they reach a consensus, and then we choose a point, or it's like the way you said that we keep a buffer and we choose a thirteen. Yeah, see, it. Uh, what I was saying is, let's suppose if everybody says that okay, no, it's thirteen story points or eight points, then you of course go with eight. But let's suppose you say no, there are two people who are saying eight points or three people who are saying eight points, eight story points, and there are two people who are saying 13, right? And there is no yeah. way you can come to a consensus. Sometimes okay. it happens. Then I would go with 13 instead of eight. Okay. Okay. Got it. The goal is to bring everybody on the same page, but sometimes it's not possible. In that case, you have to basically go with 13 because you, always you need to keep the buffer. So in that case, if let's suppose if I go with eight, people on with who have thirteen will be scared to work on it because for them it is much more complex than the people who said eight, correct? Yeah. Whereas if you give thirteen, people with eight also will be fine because they already underestimated that. Absolutely. Yeah. So now I'm done with this, right? I've done my story pointing. There's one more level of estimation which the developers will be doing. Even though we are not involved in it, you need to know that. And that is called a subtasking. Okay. This is what I mean by subtask. You need to create the subtask. The developers or the testers will be creating a subtask against each story let me unmute Deepti okay I think we lost Deepti at um, I mean signals she is traveling I guess okay so the next thing you need to do is when I say you that means the developers or the testers will be doing this you need to create the subtask so I pick a story right and I create a subtask subtask will be basically think for what the developer will be doing so for this example we will say that they will first thing they will do is create um, screens right there can be three tasks let's put three tasks create GUI screens and this is all their role right so we don't need to worry about it but it's also important to know right and here you don't need to assign it because by default the story is getting I mean this task is getting mapped to the story right which is our uh, I think OLS 2 correct I think I need to do one more thing here Ethan, what does OLS stand for oh that's my project name online library system okay Can you increase the font size? Maybe zoom in a little bit. Um, yeah, just one. You... 
Yeah, you're going too fast also. One second. Just give me a minute. Hmm, time track. Yeah. Um, so, Poonam, you were saying something? Yeah, Chetan. I, I missed the first part. Like, how did this screen pop up, the create sub task? Okay. You, what did you press? Yeah. yeah. So, I basically went here. Okay. That's one my. Second. That's one my second. Okay. Oh, yeah, let's do. Yeah. Create your user account. Yeah. Yeah. That's my story, right? That's my user story. Right. I already did my story point. Here you will see on the right side of the pane, you will see this subtask. Okay, okay. Create a subtask. Okay. And the developer will be doing this. Develop GUI screens. These are very technical tasks, so you don't need to worry about it, but you need to know uh, what they will do. Now here what they will do is, they will do an estimate at a very finite level. Generally, we do it at an hours. So a developer will say, okay, in order to create the screens for this story, it will take me 24 hours. Okay. Right? That's my original estimate. Okay. That's what you do and create it. I need one more subtask. Let's create three subtasks here. Why is it saying it cannot be, it's not currently visible? No, because we have not initiated the sprint, that's why. But let's okay. not worry about it. So in the next task, I, uh, I'll be creating again the same stories. Create database tables, right? And I'll do the same thing here. I'll keep it, I can assign it whatever I want to here. Um, it's already assigned to my story here, inherit it from parent, so I don't need to worry about it. I will say this will take me 12 hours. Make sure if you are doing it in hours, always do it in hours. These are weeks, four, three weeks, two weeks, one week, four days, whatever days you want to put it, or hours. So always pick one way of estimating. Either it can be weeks, it can be days or hours. Generally, you should do it in hours because it gives you more flexibility in assigning or estimating. Okay. And let's create one more subtask. Um, write JavaScripts. or write web services, right? And I'll do eight hours. So now we have everything what we need, right? We created our backlog with one epic, two stories, and basically we just identified one story where we have three subtasks. And we do, did an estimation at a story level, and then we did an estimation at a subtask level, where we did it in hours. Correct? Are we clear up to this point? Yeah. So basically your subtask and the main story, uh, the hours have to add up, right Chitra? Sorry, can you repeat that? So the, the subtask hours that you have uh, right now estimated. Yes. And the, um, and the time that you have estimated for the main task or the parent task, 
they all, mm -hmm. I mean, the subtask has to add up to the fare, right? No, not really. Because at a story level, I did in story points. Right? So here, see my create user account is my story. Correct? And I estimated that not in hours, but in story points. But now when the developers are looking at it, what they will do is when they initiate the sprint, before they initiate the sprint, in the sprint planning meeting, once we estimate the story points, they will go back to, to their desk and break the story into small subtask, which will be required to complete one user story. These subtasks will be in hours, but that doesn't mean that the sum of these subtasks has anything to do with this. It may be close to it, it may not be. Ideally, it should be close to it. So if I have set three points, and three point is equal to roughly, let's suppose, 24 hours, ideally what you said is correct. It should be somewhere around that time. I mean, that number, It, but it cannot be exactly same. It can be 20, it can be 30. Mm -hmm. But it has to be somewhere in that range. Okay. So it probably has to go the other way around. But you first estimate the subtask, uh, uh, the time for the subtasks, and then do the. You um, can do yeah that so also yeah people generally what we want to avoid is uh, we want to first I mean the, the the right way of doing it is we first give a story points and then based on the story points we understand the complexity of the work and then they break it down into small components. But what you said is also correct. Some people like to do an, uh, you know, uh, bottoms up approach. You know, first they want to break it down into subtask and then they say, okay, this is what it is. So you can pick any method. That's a good point. Okay. Right? So it can be a top down, what we did a top down or it can be bottoms up. Both approach. Mm -hmm. So now we have everything. Now let's assume that you know we did the sprint planning meeting, and now from uh, Monday we need to uh, we need to initiate the sprint. So what you will do is you will have it here, create sprint. You will click this, and what you will do is you will move your stories in that sprint. It's simple; just drag and drop them. Right, so my backlog is clear now because I moved my stories from the backlog to my sprint. Chetan, how do you get to create sprint uh, thing? Okay, you don't have this uh, this button here, create sprint. I'm not working at my end. Uh, okay, okay, I'm just following you screen okay so that's where it is yeah you click this you will get at this new uh, interface and you cannot kick initiate a sprint without any stories in it so you need to drag your stories into the sprint so I will do it again so right now it's blank right my sprint is blank okay I don't have anything in my sprint so I will what I will do is I'll drag and drop it here because I want to start working on the sprint so I added my two stories two user stories into my sprint and I will do start the sprint click on that give a name to the sprint by default it will have its name I'm just keeping simple sprint one you need to decide on the duration of the sprint so let's assume that you know I want to start my sprint on 7th and my sprint duration or the iteration duration is two weeks. So I start on 7th and then I end on 18th. I don't know why it's saying PM. Oh, that's why. <laughs> hmm. Right, so I'm saying I 
we'll just keep it some time here 9 30 a.m. we'll start the sprint on 7th and we will end on that's my one week and that's my second week so 18th will end okay clear Yeah. And then you click this. Now here you can have one week. So if I say, okay, I'm starting on 7th and end on 11th. Why am I having four days here? It should be five days. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. I think I need to adjust the calendar here, but it should be five days, but assuming you know you have these days here so I can say one week I can have two weeks of sprint three weeks or I can have four weeks that means it will be here but depending on what you want to set up to and then you start the sprint so it will say sprint one has successfully been started and you can see your stories in this this is what we call the Kanban board or the agile board right that's my to-do list that means the moment you start the sprint you know that this is what I need to do I need to work on these stories OLS 2 which has got three subtasks and because we did not create subtask for OLS 3 you know but still we need to work on it right are we clear up to this point could you just go back and uh, uh, just retrace the steps as to how you got to that screen there Chetan please mm. okay so what I did was okay I think I cannot go back here okay so because I've already initiated the sprint I cannot do that but what uh, never mind I'll is, try to uh, yeah what play, will happen play yeah what video. will happen is once you have your sprint you create the sprint it will open a new interface right you move your stories in the sprint click on start the sprint it will give a new dialog box where you need to select the start and end dates of your sprint and you click start the moment you click start you will get this interface okay so that basically means you have initiated your sprint and it will tell you that you know you have 10 days remaining and these are the things you need to do these are the things which are in the progress and these are the things which are completed right now because we just started the sprint we don't have anything in this lane in these two lanes okay now the velocity that's important concept here what is a velocity now assuming that we did we completed the sprint here okay let me let me back up a little bit let's take that velocity in the end let's first finish our sprint so now what will happen is every day people come in and they start working on this uh, stories so they will say okay you know somebody started working on the screens somebody started writing the database tables and people started creating the web services right so now they are in progress because people have started working on it now it can happen that one person is working on this second person is working on database and the third person is working on web services it doesn't mean that only one person is working on these three subtasks 
three people can be working on these three different subtasks. At the same time, the fourth person might be working on this story and you all will be moved to the right lane, which is in progress. So just by looking at this board, I know that you know we have two stories in progress and people are working on it and nothing has been completed so far and we don't have anything in the to-do list. So you can pick some more and put them here as and when this gets empty. So uh, here's a, a couple of questions. So who hmm. actually does this thing moves from to-do to uh, in progress? The business analyst no. has to do that? No, it's not the business analyst. It will be the owner who is working on that story. So in this case, let's suppose that's me. I have assigned, I've been assigned to this story. Then I will be owning it. That means I have to keep moving them as and when I'm done. Nobody else should be doing it. Okay. And uh, there has to be only a maximum of uh, three uh, user. No, no. Uh, Okay, there can be as many as we want. Yeah, no, there can be as many as the team can handle. And that's when the velocity comes in. And I'll talk about that, you know, in a bit. But basically, velocity is the capacity of the team they can handle in one iteration. Right? So I'll talk more about that, the velocity. But um, to answer your question, it has to be done by the owner of that particular story. Okay. Okay. So it's again simple, you know, you will drag and drop here as and when you are done with the subtask or the story. So because I moved all my three subtasks, it's saying that all the subtasks for parent issue OLS2 are now done. Do you want to update this parent issue parent issue to match? I will say yes. That means my OLS2 is also done. You can see here it's it's updated with done because all my subtasks are in the done lane. I'll do the same thing for OLS3. I'm moving it from in progress to done. Now of course this won't be done in a day. People will take, you know, one week, two weeks to do it. Assuming that we have, you know, we have gone ahead in time. We are almost in the last or, or on the last day of the sprint. We are in the last day of the sprint and now everything has to be done, right? Before we close the sprint. Because we said, you know, we will complete that by 18th of December. So maybe by 17th, all these things should be completed or worst case by 18th. So we are in the last day of the sprint and all the tasks have been moved from in progress to done. Right. Now, just like, you know, when we take exam, you don't want to keep anything in the last day before you take the exam everything has to be completed right you cannot say I'm still studying in theory right in real life it never happens but in theory everything has to be completed so same thing before we close the iteration everything has to be completed once everything is complete I will click this button complete sprint Any questions before I do that? Uh, yeah. It will tell me, okay. Yeah, go ahead. You have any questions? Yeah, Chetan, um, you said that, you know, if we, if we had given sub to the subtasks uh, the number of hours, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, you just moved it from in progress to done. So when uh, we are actually keeping a track of the hours, where is it di uh, displayed? Oh, nice point. I, sh I should have told you that. Okay. 
So what will happen is, yeah, that's, I forgot to tell you that. So let's okay. assume that every day people will come and work on them, correct? They will come and work on the task or the subtask rather. So let's suppose you are the developer, Poonam. You have been assigned this develop GUI screens. So tomorrow you come in and you work four hours on this task. So you will say, I want to log the work. Time spent, maybe four hours, log. So now you can see here, uh, one second, this was a task, right? Right, yeah. I think, it, I think it's done, that's why it's not taking. If it is in progress, then it will take. Oh yeah, one second, one second. Let me go back. And do we even need to click that log log button? No, there's one more view. I'm just trying to get there. No, I think that's not an issue. Uh, it's see, it's taking that. Because we estimated like how many, 24 hours, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's, it's converting taken into days. days. And it's saying remaining is two days and four hours because we just said like four hours of work you did. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Yes, perfect, yes. But there is another, yeah, another view you can see, but you know, um, I will have to figure it out how you can do it. But to answer your question, yes, every day, somebody comes and starts working on the task you have to log your hours okay. and these hours will be used to create your burn down charts how much work remaining how much work is completed how much work is remaining yes okay. right so you have to do for each of the task here okay because we so have not created the subtask yeah. for this story you cannot do it but in real world you would create a subtask for even this story and do the same thing yeah, yeah Chetan, one more question like uh, when uh, uh, in the user guide you had said just choose anything or you can even put up your picture there and you are playing your picture here mm -hmm. so it it is like uh, every person is working online and it is it is getting updated uh, on the cloud, right? Yes. This particular, okay. Mm -hmm. And and can two people or three people keep uh, updating it uh, in real time at the same time? You mean the same task? Yeah. No, the task, no, task no, will be assigned to task. one person. Yeah, hmm. yeah, no, not the task. So suppose there are two, oh, like yeah, uh, yeah. Darshan yeah. and Hari are working on two different tasks. Mm -hmm. And they are logged in at the same time, and they are updating and logging in their hours. Oh. So it will reflect. Yes. I mean, it will not conflict. No, the system oh. will keep working fine. That's exactly why this these tools are so that collaboratively people can work and real time status can be uh, shown, and the updates are made in real time. There is no batch processing where you know things will be queued up and then updated in the night or sometime. It is done in real time. Okay. All right. Okay, any other questions before I close this print? Um, no, Chetan, okay. So we are done with this print. Sprint successfully completed. Now here one thing is this point, story points. Right? Story point is, as I said, this gives you a cumulative count of how many story points you did in that particular sprint. Now this gives me the velocity of the team, which means this is the capacity of the sprint team based on the historical data we have. So let's assume we did two, three sprints and each sprint we are doing approximately 16, 18, 20 hours of, I mean, 20 story points worth work, right? 
So let's suppose we did this. That's a 16 story point worth iteration, correct? Right. Uh, let's suppose my iteration one was worth 16 story points. Now let's suppose we did iteration two and it was worth, let's suppose 24 points. And I did iteration three, which was again worth, let's suppose 15, um, 14 points. Now you need to come to a point where you can very confidently say that this is the capacity of the team. That means my team can handle these many story points in any given iteration. Right? So that you don't feel uncomfortable when you are picking your work. So next time when you go in iteration four, you can safely say that, you know, we can take work worth so many story points. So the way we do it is you basically want to get an average from your two, three iterations and say, this is what my story points would be. So I would say uh, some of these divided by three, 18. So that's my velocity. So any time, I mean, any iteration from this point onwards, I can safely say that 18 story points worth of work, we can do it, right? That's what we call the velocity. Yeah, so is it just, is this not forecasting? It is forecasting in the sense uh, you are basically benchmarking your team. I would rather say use the word benchmark than a forecast. So benchmarking means, you know, I'm saying, okay, any given day, my team can handle 18 story points worth of work. Okay. Okay. And that is what we call the velocity of the team. So if somebody asks you what is the velocity, I can say my velocity of, I mean, velocity of my team is 80 story, 18 story points. That means on any given day, my team can do work worth 18 story points. Nothing less, nothing more. Right, so th basically that's how you use this tool from end to end. Any questions? I don't think so. It's a easy tool. <laughs> mm -hmm. It uh, means we have to work hard on that. Yeah, it's an easy tool. But just thing, you know, it has. No, uh, it's not easy. <laughs> oh, it's not easy. You said. I thought you said it's yeah, a I, tool. No, it's not an easy tool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, there's one more thing which uh, we will have to cover it tomorrow uh, or not tomorrow on Sunday. We can meet, right? You guys are okay. Sunday evening. Yeah, I'm fine. fine. Uh, okay. Sunday evening we'll cover the burn down charts and then we'll cover the module three. Basically, you know, that will be technically that will be the last, um, um, what do you call the training session. From that point onwards, one week we'll use to do the resumes and mock interviews and all that. Hello? Yeah. I thought the voice is gone. So Chetan, are you ideally saying that uh, on Sunday we are going to be finishing with the training and the uh, uh, following week would be uh, resume, resume preparations and mock interview? Yes. Okay, so just one day of class left, right? Yeah. Okay. One or maximum two days, but not more than that. But uh, if uh, there are problems with assignments that that we may have, 
Mm -hmm. We can uh, we can discuss those, right? Yeah, yeah, sure, we can. Okay. Um, so after that week, when you're not in town, will there be anybody to assist with any problems in the assignments? Because I'm going to start working on them. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Actually, uh, for the assignments, uh, you will have to wait for me. But uh, I will have somebody who will help you with the Q and A. Okay. Right. Just um, okay. I'll. I'll basically have that person so that you know she will take your mock interviews and you know keep you engaged. But if you have any assignments, uh, you will have to email me. Uh, you know, I'll try my best to reply it back. But you know, since I'll be traveling here and there. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So uh, I just because I'm I'm going to just do the whole thing again because I've not had a chance to oversee what we have done. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's why I said um, it's going to be a little delayed for me. No problem. Okay. Okay. So I hope this uh, session was, uh, you know, helpful, and you guys can play with the tool. And so are you bit? Definitely, we try. Yeah. Okay. So I have one. Okay, I don't want to overburden your you guys but I think for today it is this is enough right yeah yeah that's it yes yeah. okay <laughs> okay so I'll post a video right away after this so I'm sure you might be going back and forth and seeing what we did okay yeah But was this um, a demo useful? What do you think? Like, because this is a tool which generally we use to do our work, you know, do the sprints and all that. I think it's not like visio when when you are teaching, we can do simultaneously. But like for this one, mm -hmm. when you are teaching, we cannot do simultaneously because we lose something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's why like I have to keep uh, repeating this video and then after I can play with the tool. Okay. Yeah, to be frank with you. No, no, that's yeah, but because you know this is more like uh, Visio is more like a visual, right? You can drag and drop and see the notations. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, this yeah, is a little bit true. different. Yeah, uh, means, uh, other tool which we used is like user friendly. Hmm. Means no, we, can, is... we can use our general knowledge, or maybe mm -hmm. we can click something and we can we will get it, right? Mm -hmm. If we want to uh, want to do a copy paste, we can do Control C and V. And if we want to go back, we can do Control Z, right? Mm -hmm. But over here, we cannot do anything. Like if I want to go back, there is means there is no fa uh, fa flexibility to do that kind of command. Mm -hmm. But it will take a time. Yeah, it's just a learning curve. It's an easy tool again. You know, it's not a difficult tool at all. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. It's there's just a bit learning curve there. So. Keep yeah. playing with it. Even after five days, you just do one thing. You know, create a create a new email and do the same thing again. So that's a good thing about Jira. It doesn't stop you um, from using it using different email IDs. So you can do yes, it. Yes. Okay. 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 And do you have any other user guide or? Mm, that's basically what I did. From my end, I created this. But I can yeah. send you. I think there are some videos on Confluence itself. I mean, not Confluence in, on Jira. In G on Jira, okay. I can okay. send you some links. Basically, they are from the Atlassian tool. I mean, company itself. So they will teach you. Uh, but these these videos are more about you know how to use the tool. They won't te teach you the concepts. But still, it may be worth uh, listening to that. Okay. 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 No problem. Thank you. Okay. Okay, then, yeah. When will, when will you be back from India? I'll be back on 11th of Jan. Okay. Man, you have to do Uttarayana over there. Oh, no, man. The, actually, the, the project I'm working on, we have a very uh, weird rule. We cannot stay outside US for more than 30 days. 
Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I'm yeah, coming first. back on right on time, like 29th day I'll be in US. And keeping my fingers crossed just in case there's a snowstorm or something. No storm, okay. <laughs> I don't know what will happen. But uh, okay. that's the limitation we have, you know, we, we can't even, once, first we cannot come in in the US and once you come in you cannot go. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. <laughs> Both ways they are, uh, you know, trapping people. Yes, yes, yes. But that's what it is. But it's just on my project it is. Not that everybody has the same rule. Yes, yes, yes. You are going to miss Uttarayana. <laughs> yeah, I will. Yes, yes. And then okay. my son's school also is there. You know, I don't want him to miss too many days. So oh, we're yeah, just yeah. going a week before his uh, Christmas break starts and the week after mm -hmm. the school reopens. So technically, he will miss only two weeks before and after the break, which is okay, you know. Yeah, which is okay. Yeah. So. That's true, that's true. Did, did, did. You, your whole family is going? Yeah, we all four are going. Oh, okay. That's great. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's all we have for tonight. We'll meet again on Sunday. So let's meet up on Sunday and, you know, um, finish it off. So most likely Sunday and maybe one more day we may need, but I think Sunday should be enough to finish it. Sunday what time, Chetan? Same, 9 p.m. We can stick to 9 p.m. Okay. Okay. Okay, Chetan. Okay, yeah. Okay then. Uh, good night and I'll see you back on Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.